out of this. Greetings, I'm Shad, and as you may have seen recently, we have made an analogue of a giant sword to see how you would fight with it if you had either the super strength to be able to wield something like this, or if it was made out of a super light material to the point where it would be somewhat functional. From that video, we had such a good time and it worked out su so surprisingly well that we're going to be pushing this further. There are so many things that we are going to be testing about giant swords. You know, how hard do they hit? What are they like in combat versus regular swords? Like, stay tuned, there's going to be so much awesome content, but also a very big project. I want to see if we can make a functional giant sword with an actual steel cutting edge with all the other kind of design elements that we learned from trying to play around with this thing to make it as usable and functional as possible. And we have made the first major step in this design, and that is building a prototype to see if the design that we have will work, if it'll hold up to the stresses of combat, and oh boy, do we have something very awesome to show you. Introducing the Titan Sword, or the prototype of it. And uh, already, from your first initial glance, you might be seeing that there are some very interesting kind of design features that we have added to this thing to make it as functional as possible. And this thing is, oh my goodness, it is amazing. Because one of the main things to try and make a truly functional giant sword. Now, by the way, the reason why I called it the Titan Sword is because Titan Sword is not usually used a lot to describe giant swords, it is usually giant sword. And by making it a more unique kind of descriptor, it's referring to this specific design. What are the unique elements of this design that make it different from, say, a regular giant sword? Well, first of all, see how it has these kind of curved in sections? This is essentially a giant ricasso. So even though we're gonna upgrade this to a stronger material and add a cutting edge to it, this section here that has the kind of inwards curves will have no cutting edge on it. The edge will actually start here. So that means you can use all those techniques that we discovered in the last video about leveraging with your shoulder, like so. And so it can easily rest here and you can push it off to get big attacks. And then of course, the unique cutouts that we have on this design. You'll notice that I've already been using it. There is a central kind of grip so you can hold it here. You can hold it on the sides, but also you can grab it midway up the blade. And this is to get far recovery so if you did a big hit and someone's over there and you need to recover quickly you can grab it and swing it up over and also half sorting to give you way more control in the combat and so with those two primary design features a long blunt and ricasso and cutouts to have extra hand holds in similar positions you would have what i am now defining as the titan sword and oh my goodness is this incredibly effective? Like, well, we need to weigh it because this is so light and usable, but how light? Let me show you. So as a point of comparison, I'm going to be weighing one of my larger swords. This is the English two-hander. Now, I know it's not gonna be a pe perfect comparison because say, this sword here made completely of steel would be ridiculous in weight, but it's really just get the comparison. Say if I had super strength to be able to lift something like that, comparable weight difference. But anyway, just so you know how difficult it is for me in my current physical state to use that compared to say, uh, a regular sword of this size, this comes in at 2.2 kilos. So 2.2 kilos. Now, this one being made out of wood comes in about 3.2 kilos. So this one is heavier than some of the uh, heavier ends of swords. Now you could get swords up to the three kilo, but that's, you're already getting to the very limit. But that is why I can still kind of use this one. But check out how much weight we've been able to reduce with the Titan sword by making it like this. And so this official weigh in, 2.2 kilos. It is like a solid kilo lighter than the other one. And bear in mind, this one has a full steel pummel that I, you know, were able to unwind from one of my other swords. And yet it is still very much in the full functional range for a regular strength person. That's pretty awesome. But you know there is another thing that helps you be able to get giant savings effectively with your food bill? Yes, that is the sponsor of this video, HelloFresh. 
Guys, HelloFresh are offering one of their best deals yet. So when I say there's giant savings, this is very true. All you have to do is go to HelloFresh.com and use code Shadowversity21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Free food available right there. This is how I first tried HelloFresh. I had nothing to lose and I was hooked ever since. It's genuinely brilliant and HelloFresh's Festival Fair collection features limited time recipes made with seasonal products and premium proteins. This will help you get out of the post-holiday slump with these elevated winter classics to whip up restaurant quality meals right in your own kitchen. And genuinely, if I can make HelloFresh, and I am not a talented cook, but they turn out brilliantly, anyone can. You'll be able to eat well in the new year, stress-free, and it's delicious. They have over 35 different weekly recipes. So there's always options you're looking for that will also help you achieve your goals. You can choose calorie smart and carb smart recipes, or even customize select meals by swapping proteins and sides. Upgrade your proteins, or add a protein to a veggie dish. And you can dive in right now easier than ever before. All you have to do is go to HelloFresh.com and use code SHADOWVERSITY21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. It's genuinely brilliant. You won't be disappointed. And thank you very much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. So you've probably been able to tell that this sword is made out of wood. And if we were to make this exact same design, even with the cutouts out of steel, probably still be way too heavy to be properly functional. I think it would actually be light enough for you to be able to pick up and do a couple of like really wide heavy swings. I think it would be around the five kilo mark, honestly, maybe even more. To get it properly functional, I, that's still too heavy. But we are planning to make a version of this design, if it works, with a real steel cutting edge. So how on earth are we gonna achieve that with it being light enough? And making it out of wood will not do for the final version because it, wood is too weak. It will break, when, especially when it clashes against something or hits something with with, you know a lot of force that's strong uh, yeah it'll break so our plan if it works this is just one plan is to try and make this out of carbon fiber that's right and adding in a steel edge all around now if we can't do it out of carbon fiber the fallback plan is to try and make it out of aluminium but there are some unique problems that we're gonna to have to try and address that we did discover in making this even out of wood. Let me bring in our in-house craftsman to explain some of the interesting things we discovered in making this. Tyrant, how are you, mate? I'm very good. Awesome. How are you, boss? I'm great. Tyrant here is actually a master prop maker. I am. Oh, you're gonna shout out my channel? Yeah, check out his channel. I love you, boss. What's the name of your channel? Uh, Tyrant. Tyrant. <laughs> <laughs> and he, but seriously, he makes some phenomenal props like lightsabers and stuff. So you're a master craftsman, right? And what a privilege it is to work with Tyrant here because he can use his skills in helping us make some really awesome projects. And so Tyrant is the one who did the main groundwork in making this based on the design I made in SketchUp. The design philosophy is pretty straightforward. Same size as a super giant sword, remove sections, to be able to make it more functional, but the sections that I removed are very strategic because I wanted handholds. Now, Tyrant actually wasn't aware I wanted that at first. Yes, you didn't tell me this until <laughs> very late in the process. I just, here's the design, make it. And your, your reaction was like, there's a, there's a clear problem with this design. Exactly. You need to strengthen this entire spine of this blade. Mm -hmm. But you neglected to tell me that these were handholds. These were handholds. Well, I kept suggesting, <laughs> let's strengthen straight up there. And you wanted a central kind of ridge, or not even ridge, but a central uh, support, you know, piece going right down the middle. Exactly. Just like we have here. Exactly like this one. And so this gives a lot of structure, uh, otherwise it gets too floppy because it's just the, the torque and how far away is from the point of leverage. It's just too, far too large, mm -hmm. too much material. When you actually did make this, the original prototype, this one, you discovered and you showed me how incredibly floppy it was from this point up. Well, I didn't really discover it. I was pretty... I was you, pretty you, you, I was pretty it was confirmed. That. It was confirmed. And so Tyrant was like, we really need a central ridge. And I was like, no, if we do that, we can't have a handholds. And then he was like, oh, you want handholds? Well, that makes sense. <laughs> My solution was to try and then reinforce this outer part because by having this central ridge reach this point, this whole section is actually quite reinforced and strong. The problem is there onwards. But if we overlap the reinforcement, so there's a reinforcement here and then this one coming past it, I suspect that, that should hold it quite well. One of my concerns is if we did it like a full strip reinforcement, top and bottom on each end, that would add too much weight. But if you understand kind of uh, like leverage, especially if you look at the I-beams, right, all you need is uh, 
kind of like an extension, okay? You don't need the whole area pushed further out. All you need is a really small ridge. That is true, and I specifically chose yes. this, this uh, shape because it's of wood. Angled. It's, a tri it's a triangular shape, mm -hmm. which will add rigidity just by its shape. Exactly. So that's and specifically chosen. That has worked perfectly. Holding it at the very edge. It's look, almost as if I know what I'm doing. Look, yeah, I know, right? Look, look how flat that is. This is like perfectly rigid. And we'll have to interlay the footage of how... Yes, how there, floppy it was. There was a bow in the wood. Yeah, there was, there. and now it's just fully straight. So that worked out beautifully but this also raises an interesting um, thing to remember when we move up to trying to make this out of carbon fiber aluminum. I still want to do carbon fiber we'll give it a go. We'll give Tyranth it a go. why do you think aluminum well because it will look amazing it will be light <laughs> and we can polish it so it'll actually look like a functional it, weapon. it'll look like steel it'll look cool the thing is though carbon fiber is even lighter and stronger it is. like in terms of its it strength is. in in bending and distortion that's so that's going to be yeah that's going to be the trick okay it might be too much of a turd to work with we're going to attempt it and we'll record the whole process so you can watch and see i see the succeed or fail hope to see you there but aluminum will be uh, an easier workable material um uh, to make this thing the key though will be the cutting edge that we then fix to the outside I don't know how you want to go about that. I actually don't know how you want to go about that. I was thinking like... Well, carbon fiber can get really strong glue that we're going to sandwich in between. So that's an option with carbon fiber. Yeah, and then sure we wrap it around on the steel we can go for. Like actually, you want a proper steel cut? Yeah, yeah. So there are a couple of, um, I guess, uh, companies that do cut out steel shapes. Yes. I've already prototyped some things. But they are, that's not usually blade steel. And it's usually not heat treated. And we'll if it is heat treated, yeah. we're not going to be able... I'm going to be very clear about this boss. If it's heat treated, we can't work with it. I can't work with it. It's... I've seen people work with it. Grinding can it get... Is... I know it's a turd. I know it's a turd. No, no, no. I... <laughs> he doesn't fully understand just how difficult working is with hardened okay. steel is. It a is... Okay, a couple of things. We could compromise and go down from hardened steel because even historically, right? Mm. Medium carbon steel was used so often in swords. And for the tests that we'll be doing, we're going to be testing against uh, water bottles, maybe some mats, wood, okay? Yeah. Um, low, even medium or low carbon steel will actually hold up perfectly. It's, it's when you put it against metal, that's when uh, those types of steels can fail. But for the proof of concept of making a functional giant sword, yeah. regular steel would actually work just, just as well. No hardened steel. Cause yeah. One of the tricky things though, is this ridge. And so what we're going to need to do is with either aluminium or carbon fiber is actually have the edges angled I know. like like an actual sword. I know. There's a reason why I, I, <laughs> I, I, I'm a bit uh, intrepidous. <laughs> it's going to be tricky. Like, I actually think we would need to make the whole thing thick out of carbon fiber and then grind in the edge. I was thinking more of like a, uh, a sort of... It's got a top high ridge, but then it comes around like this, like a bend. It yeah. It's incredibly yeah. sleek and beautiful, but yeah. it's uh, very difficult to do. I'm yeah. not actually sure how to do it. That's interesting. So it's the reverse of a hollow grind. Yes. You want like an, an outer grind that's a curve. Sides, that's so for both the sides. Will be like okay. The that, could, that could work. That could work. Yeah. The key is we need it thin here and thick here, as thick as this is, to get keep the rigidity. Exactly. And uh, then the transition from here to the handles, I'd like to try and keep smooth. Tyrant, he knows, he knows his business. <laughs> it's just, you just go, oh, I want this, I want that, I want this. It's like, okay, some of these things might not be. <laughs> <laughs> it's great having people helping you out of this stuff. Make it so. And then you're like Scotty where it's like, I can only do it in like, how many days? And then you'll come back in one day. I'll give it a go. You're a miracle worker, just like Scotty. Tyrant. So there's some exciting stuff and I can't wait to actually get something with the cutting edge that we'll test out. But so far, so good. This is holding up really, really well. But now, to be clear, mm -hmm. this is supposed to have longer cross guards. Yes, I cut them off because I didn't have enough time. I am still on the fence about cross guards. I'm wondering if we I just remove it. Yeah, it might be long enough, especially all you need this part is long enough to rest it on the shoulder. And I think that already does it. Them a bit so not so Maybe. We might not need any extra cross guard unless we wanted to be able to hang that it a bit further out. That, that just makes it easier for me. Also. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe, maybe I'll decide I want them. <laughs> um, but the thing is, having longer cross guard, I'm worried might make it more difficult 
to rest it on your shoulder and get that leverage point, especially if you're wanting to like get close in and that cross guard could hit. By having no cross guard there, you can get it in right there, leverage really easily. For a point of reference, let's compare the previous model to this one. And it's pretty darn close in terms of size and width, only the slightest difference. Handles a bit longer, I don't mind that, because it's the pummel. How was this one to wield? Because I wasn't there for the last video. Um, I heard there was a, a mishap or user error. <laughs> you know the thing they see in video games? You mean the castle? Yeah. It can hit hard. So when we actually test how hard these things can hit, we're gonna use this one because it's a better point in comparison to something that had more weight behind it. Okay. But we'll still test with um, the real one as well. We'll do both, I think. Uh, because- I don't mind if you ruin this one. I don't wanna ruin the nice shiny one. <laughs> Thing is though, this weighs as much as a uh, war sword, a steel war sword, but it has leverage. Okay, the torque, exactly, and so the tip is going to be moving a lot faster when it impacts, and so already... This was only, what, three something kilos? Ah, uh, 3.2. But there's so much weight up here. Yes, just yes, that's the unwieldy. key. Wieldable enough, but awkward and difficult and exhausting. But if the weight was evenly mm -hmm. dispersed, yeah. actually I should say, more uh, uh, efficiently dispersed, <laughs> it would be a lot easier to win. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly what we achieved with this one. Like, you've felt it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like, look at that, look at that. The fact that you could... I have the power! <laughs> no, seriously, you, you feel like, oh, this is so awesome! I have the power! So far, this design is a massive success, all right? But I'm just gonna do some quick kind of test swings to get an idea of how it works. And uh, if, it if it holds up, we're gonna be moving on then to the next stage. Hopefully carbon fiber, if not carbon fiber, aluminium, but with a cutting edge. Try not to hit the castle this time. I don't actually think this one will survive that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I don't want to fix the castle. Right? <laughs> Get out of here! It's just showing the power of giant swords. Alrighty, so there are a number of stances that we discovered in the previous video and we're experimenting with it. And one of them was just resting on the shoulder. This works just as good. But I think now that we have the Rakaso, actually resting it on there is even better because you can just leverage and swing it down really quickly. And then you have the rest position here. But if you, you know, have your timing right, even if someone tries to attack you, all you need to do is step back. And because you have this leverage, you can just spin it really i wonder how quick let's let's see so there he's like oh that was too much of a lead up like i think it'll be faster just going down like that so yeah yeah that's quick and so just bang bang and then off the shoulder leverage again and then off the shoulder leverage recovery leverage and then Oh, I like this stance. All right, so I've taken the brigandine off, easy to breathe while I swing this thing around. And I'm, I want to see if I'm just chaining a couple of moves here. So if you start, all right, fine, start with a leverage hit, right? Then grab, recovery, spin back, spin hit. And then recovery, actually no, shoulder, spin, shoulder, spin back. Let's see if I can do that. Interesting, you can get downward swings somewhat with this. Okay, so primary stances with a uh, Titan sword is the shoulder rest one. Works really, really well, just like so. But also, you could point it forward. So you can do shoulder rest like so, like this. You can see that. That's ready to just lift off, go into a strike, back on, something like that. Leverage up to other shoulders. So this is the alternate shoulder rest, but if you want to face it forward, do it like that, okay? Then honestly, something like this would actually work just as well. 
So you could, if you want to point forward, instead of wrecking your arm, hold it up like this, ready to go, ready to swing around, strike back there. So that works. This one is all right. Hit, recover, hit, recover. All right, we have our break. It's broken right here. All right, so this is why we of course can't make the final version out of wood because it just can't hold up to the stresses of even standard, oh, that was like practice use, not intensive thing. This is the very purpose of making the prototype, but I think the design is still very sound. Uh, I feel we've proven that, and of course we've proven why we need to go up to a stronger material, but when we go up to stronger material, I don't think we'll get breaks like this. If you see there, see that? See that break there? Right there. Look at that! How bloody brilliant is this thing? The uh, Titan Sword, designed for real functional use, leveraging off and just kind of bring it down with the shoulder. I love it, this is great. But there's so much more to explore now that we have some usable prototypes, okay? One thing that's been on my mind is could now I replicate some of the combat movesets from famous giant sword wielding characters. One of the biggest ones in my mind is Siegfried from Soul Calibur. Oh, I can't wait to give that a go. I also want to test out how hard do they hit and also spar with them against regular sized swords and also against another giant sword. Like how, how much of an advantage would you get out of these things in combat? So to do that, we're going to be making a foam version of this so it'll be safe and start trying to hit each other with it. When I say we, I mean Tyrant, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that'll be great. So stay tuned, guys, to Shadowverse to see all these awesome giant sword videos with this giant sword project that we are undertaking here. I really hope to see you there. Thank you very much for watching. And until that time, farewell.